What we do is collide protons with each other and see what comes out. And what comes out is different every single time. The basis of that is quantum mechanics that tells you that even if you have the same initial condition and do the same thing again and again and again, what comes out each time is different. And that is the essence of what we do. We, we measure how often stuff happens. And if it happens more or less often than quantum mechanics predicts, that's when we get very, very excited. In addition to our huge data samples, we need even huger simulated data samples. These are important to understand our efficiencies, our backgrounds, and all these kinds of things. For example, the use of computing power is dominated by simulation more than by actual data analysis. A GAN is a generative adversarial neural network, and that is basically you pitch two neural networks against each other. One of them tries to distinguish the simulated or generated event or object or picture, very often used in pictures, from a true one. And the other one is tries to fool it. So it has as its disposal a set of correct, true examples, and you train one of the neural nets to fool the other. Now, we don't tend to actually simulate reality. We, we, we take examples from the slow simulation and train the GAN with that. And in that way, the GAN is a way of very quickly then once it's trained, uh, simulate events that look very similar to the ones that we otherwise take a lot of time for to simulate. The IPU always outperformed the GPUs and CPUs anyway when it came to small batch sizes, which we typically have in training, so they learn much faster. The IPU having a, a MIMD architecture with lots of parallel cores that can do completely separate things to each other is, is really a, a great development in that sense because you can have different parts of a model that are doing different things to different data all at the same time without the same kind of overheads that you'd have in a GPU which is optimized more for doing one thing to lots of elements of data. So to be able to just do very different operations on different data really opens up the, uh, the, the floodgates really to what types of models and what types of things you can put in GANs. As well as with a, with a GAN, the generative part relies on some element of random number generation as well, which we have built into the hardware. So that really does have a, a very accelerated aspect to it as well. In IPUs, the individual cores are much more independent of each other. So that gives you much more flexibility. It's a bit more like, a, a, a bit more like many, many, many CPUs, but cleverer. The first point of call was to use it on a Kalman filter, which is one of the most ubiquitous algorithms used in particle physics, and it is typically used for tracking particles. And that Kalman filter contains one thing that GPUs really don't like, uh, and that is soft if statements, and it goes back and forth uh, in order to optimize itself. And um, so we did implement it, and I think that's in itself uh, uh, an exciting thing. We did implement one of the most widely used um, algorithms in particle physics on an IPU, and it worked. How well the IPU coped with additional complications, that's like going back and, back and forth and, uh, 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 and having a lot of conditional statements in there, uh, and there indeed it, uh, it coped with that better than the, than the GPU did. It's like having thousands of CPU cores almost. That any, any model that you have that is massively parallel, but also any non-machine learning or traditional machine learning type of computational algorithm that is just very, very parallel and can take advantage of lots of independent cores. All of these stand to benefit from the IPU, not just a deep neural network necessarily. In the next few years, our experiment will collect and process something of the order of 40 terabyte per second coming off the detector and fully process this with a full event reconstruction, full calibration, etc. And we expect in the next stage this will be much more. Especially for the kind of research I do, more computing power directly translates to more events that we can analyze. It is also an example, and there it is not the only example, is how doing fundamental science, like the kind of science funded by STFC, particle physics, astronomy, really fundamental stuff, how that interacts with industry and with very applied industry. These GraphCore IPUs, they are real things. You can hold them in, the, in your hand and there will be a consumer product that will be used very widely. We know that there must be some new physics out there. There are too many discrepancies between our standard model and what the universe gives us.
But to find that new thing, we need extremely high precision measurements of exactly how much of that, when we create matter and antimatter, how different do they behave? What are the precise, minute little differences between them that might explain what we are observing on the large scale of the cosmos?